Do you want someone like that who believes that we should limit care and have one doctor trying to represent all doctors and he's a political appointee? Absolutely not. That's called vertical decision making from the top. It makes no sense. Back in Vietnam, when they first developed the M16 rifle, a lot of bright guys in the McNair got together and said, this gun doesn't need any cleaning kit. We know because we're from Harvard. They sent those boys out in Vietnam, and what happened? Sir Jacob, did you hear? That gun jammed. It jammed, they didn't know better. So why would you want to take doctors out of a healthcare advisory committee, telling you what's good for your health, and having a lawyer and a labor union person. It makes no sense. It's not common sense. So I ask the president, listen today, scratch this health care advisory committee and go to each individual college of specialty. Ask the American College of Cardiology, the American College of Surgery, what's best for our people, an open discussion with the people, make it transparent, and then we advise the government what's best for our patients. Don't do it the other way. Do you agree? Yeah. Absolutely. Now, Dr. Malley, I just want to say quickly, and this is something I wrote down because I don't like a speech from a teleprompter. I don't want to write it down because I really felt that if I came here as a doctor, like I talked to my patients, I would speak what's on my mind and my heart. And that's what I think is best. Please respect me as a Blue Dog Democrat. I might not have the same color in the voting booth as you, but I still have the same heart and soul that you do. Absolutely. I love my country just as much as anyone on the right or left. I respect any political party calling me un-American, whether you're far right or far left. I have a right to be here to speak my mind and tell you that I'm here with you all. So the Tea Party, when it first started, what's going to happen, gentlemen and ladies? What should happen, ladies and gentlemen? The British government decided to take tea, a commodity, like an insurance product, and gave it to only one company, the India Tea Company. They stopped all the other companies, and they said, guess what, colonists? We're going to give this tea at a little discount of 10%. percent you going to buy it from the Russell government. But, on the other hand, we're going to tax you without representation. Does that sound familiar? The public option, slightly lower cost, with taxation without representation, without the input of doctors, is that what you want? Hell no. So, this is the finale for you. The challenge here is not to forget, is not to forget who is the center of this great debate. Please don't forget. It's not about your party. It's not about destroying the other party. It's not about that. It's not the political parties or the extreme parts of the parties that count. It's not about the president either. Rather, it's all about these folks. Patience, and guess what? We all will become patients. Me, you, your kids. If God calls us all with disease, we're all patients. And this, this drama will be carried out in this healthcare debate, and God only knows we need to fix it, but reasonably. And we as a nation, we as a nation shall be judged by our deeds, not by our words. You can have politicians out there getting you all day with speeches, but at the end of the day, look how we treat our old people. Look at them. And that's how we'll be judged. And this drama will be played out in emergency rooms, hospital centers, operating rooms, all around this great nation. But we have to see and have to protect the vulnerable, the sick, because those are the ones who need us the most. And it, what drew me to medicine now, and hopefully people in the future, it's our compassion for our patients. We will not always cure you. Absolutely not. I am not Jesus. I try to do his work. I am vulnerable, but I try my damnedest. And people here, my patients, and my friends know that. I work long hours like my father did because I love what I do and I love my people. But if I cannot cure you, one thing I can offer you, compassion. And that should be taken away by the government for putting a barrier between this and that. I want to be there for you guys, and please, make that happen by raising your voices. Even Jesus Christ got angry, didn't he? When he went into the temple with the money changers, he trashed that place. So, anger, controlled anger is good. You're not threatening the president. You're not wishing him to fail. Don't buy the rhetoric of the far left or the far right. 
You want this man to succeed in getting you a fair health care system that's good for you and drop this social program that he has to ruin our health care in our nation. Now, approach this debate with dignity. When you guys go on your little tours, show them you have the facts. Point out the document I gave you. Show them that they're not foolish, but you're true patriots and have knowledge on your side. And let your passions rise to the level that your representatives hear you. Because you really did derail the train of change. You stopped this bill from ruining medicine because you all did have that passion. But this is what you must keep in mind. Excellence in medical care. Now, for my president. I'm a nobody on the national level. I'm a somebody here for my family, my friends, and my patients. I know this debate has been painful for many citizens, and elected officials also. This is not a cause that has to be lost. It can be won. But we have to do it for patient care. Do you remember when Clinton won the election? He said it's about the economy, stupid. Well, let me tell you this to all government officials. Congressman Barber, this let's go to you, please. It's about the patient, stupid. So, here's my challenge. Put aside the special interest groups. Let the American people preserve the patient-doctor relationship. And let's extend this magnificent health care system to all Americans who qualify, make it affordable for all Americans. God bless you all today for coming out in the rain. God bless the United States of America on this honored day of September 11th. Thank you for your understanding.